Song Jae, actually, this is his first time competing in a Regulation G tournament. Game one of top 16 of the Pokemon World Championships in the Masters Division. Japan National Champion Humahara with Terrapagos Ogre Pond Hearth Flame on the lead versus Korea's hopeful Sung Jae Jung, Maridon Whimsicott. A great position for Huma to start this game. Right off the bat, has access to follow me and redirect any of those attacks from the Maridon into that position. Could alternatively just switch out this Terrapagos to try and maintain speed control or terrain control, but instead actually going to lock in the Terrastalization on that Terrapagos turn number one. A lot of times we see trainers play around with the fact that their Terrapagos will Terrastalize later game to force the whole, well, is it going to be single target damage? Will it do double target damage? But to see such a confident Terrastalization lock here from Yuma. This is the experience of the Japan national champion. Yeah, if you're a Japan national champion, you can be as confident as you want going into the world championships here. So he's going to terrestrialize on turn one. Light screen from Whimsicott will negate 50% of the damage from special attacks for the next five to eight turns. Oh! Uh, the next five turns. But oh, he actually gets the one hit KO onto Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. No damage from Ogre Pond this turn. And now you're going to be able to get up a calm mind for this Terrapagos. Luckily, did not take damage, but even with the plus one boost, Whimsicott set up the light screen, and Whimsicott has Prankster, uh, Prankster Encore, and you can't redirect it. You can't redirect it, but you could certainly try and flinch it if it weren't for the fact that Whimsicott is holding a covert cloak. So while the Rillaboom here is a great time to set up your grassy terrain, when the Terrapagos terrestrialized, it did remove the electric terrain from the field as well. Uh, but still, you're going to be looking to try and find some damage here and you're going to have to assume that you can either take another attack from this Maridon. It did drop two special attack stages thanks to that Draco Meteor. Or you assume your opponent is going to switch that Pokemon out. You Terra Star Storm, you go for an attack on that Rillaboom into the Pokemon coming in and just get ready to hopefully figure out a way to handle the Maridon the next time it's around. Yeah, this Maridon is truly not uh, too much of a threat into Huma right now. You can feel confident that both Terrapagos and Rillaboom are not too threatened with the minus two special attack from the Draco Meteor. So of course, Sungjae has to swap that Maridon out and bring it around later on in game one. He will decide to bring his own Ogre Pond Hearth Flame onto the field. So two grass types here for Sungjae against the Rillaboom. There's, the, There's encore the encore we were talking about because Rillaboom did did not go or can't fake out a Cobra Club Pokemon. Now Tropicos is locked into clicking Calm Mind every turn and not getting any damage. Wood Hammer with a great switch for Sung Jae because he takes resisted damage. A lot of trainers would try and switch out the Pokemon there to avoid being encored into an attack, but until the reveal of the Ogre Pond, it's not the worst thing to be locked into Calm Mind. You're still at full health. You still have the support of the grassy terrain and the leftovers recovery to mitigate any damage. And that Maridon had already taken the special attack drops as well. So this Terrapagos was in a really prime position to take that risk. And honestly, you can capitalize on these couple of slower turns as we see Song Jae switching Pokemon around to get additional Calm Minds in. Yes, the Terrapagos can't attack this turn, but barring a critical hit from the opposing Ogre Pond, it's not exactly threatened either. Sung Jae does swap Whimsicott out into the Iron Hand, so he has revealed all four of his Pokemon here in game one, as Huma has as well, since this shiny Incineroar is hitting the battlefield over that Rillaboom spot. And now it's time for Sung Jae to terrestrialize Ogre Pond Hearth Flame with that Embody aspect, turning it into a pure fire type and boosting its attack by one stage. So this is gonna be an even stronger hit into the other side. He was intimidated on the other way around, so it's back towards neutral. But here is a Fire Ivy Cudgel into the Terra Shell Tropicals. That's pretty solid damage. It's solid damage. And especially with the reveal of the Iron Hands on Song Jae's side of the field, the Strapgos is in a lot of danger. This Iron Hands has access to its own fake out. It has both Drain Punch and Low Kick to go for damage here. And overall will be able to tank hits thanks to the Assault Vest. It's a very naturally bulky Pokemon on top of and that. And the Light Screen. And the Light Screen as well. So even though Huma is going to, again, be playing through a couple of these more passive turns, getting those Calm Mind boosts up. Song Jae has found a board position where he can just go on the offense and really put a lot of board pressure down while Huma either waits for the Encore to end, which should happen after this turn, or just finds a way to pivot around. If you 
go ahead and parting shot with your Incineroar. You can drop the attack of that Iron Hands a little bit. You can get your Rillaboom back out onto the field, but I don't think you want to switch in your Rillaboom because as soon as the Maridon comes back, you need a way to remove that terrain. Right, it, Huma's in a really tough spot. Losing Ogre Pond Hearthflame on turn one has given him much less flexibility being down three Pokemon to four. Whimsicott will swap onto the Iron Hands position, and now it's time for another Terra Boosted Ivy Cudgel into Terrapagos. Not enough for the KO. Takes it like a champ. That is now the last turn of Calm Mind. However, Whimsicott's right back on the field. And as long as that Terrapagos doesn't attack before the Whimsicott connects a Encore with that slot, it will be Encored into Calm Mind once again. So while Huma is able to pivot here, will get the Rillaboom back on the field, you still cannot flinch that Pokemon. And Terrapagos, you either switch out and you lose all the special attack and special defense you just built up, or you protect and then you just get Encored in to protect the next turn, which then you don't necessarily get That's every turn. That's the thing, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll just protect to get out, to get out of Encore, but then you get protected into it. So Humans Terrapagos is in just a really difficult position here in game one. Wim's got as well if the Terrapagos somehow switches out for later. Light Screen is almost up, so the Whimsicott can still stick around and reset up Light Screen for later. Huma's out at this point in time is most likely to go for a double protect. It's a very risky play here, but hypothetically you can U-turn into that Whimsicott, get some damage down, get the Incineroar back onto the field, and then the second turn try and use the Incineroar to lock in a KO against that Whimsicott and hope that knockoff, despite the resisted damage, would pick up the KO there. But instead, making a very difficult decision here, will actually switch out that Terrapago. So it'll be able to come back onto the field and attack, but will it be able to accomplish anything without those critical boosts? We know Incineroar has to go into that slot as it's the only Pokemon in the back for Huma. So Incineroar replacing the Terrapagos there. Whimsicott tried to go for the Encore, but of course it just swapped him, so that's not going to work. Here is now another Intimidated and Parting Shot and Intimidated. Ivy Cudgel into the Fire type means it does nothing. Rillaboom can U-turn out to safety to get Terrapagos back onto the field at the end of this turn. And with Terrapagos returning to the field, if it is able to take another Ivy Cudgel from the opposing Ogre Pond, can deal back some super effective damage with Terra Star Storm now that the Ogre Pond has been terrastalized. Whimsicott cannot go for an Encore in this position for the Terrapagos because it hasn't used a move yet. And that Incineroar is going to be a dark type Pokemon, so any prankster boosted attacks are going to fail. I think you just keep Whimsicott on the field, though. At the end of the day, you have a very favorable position. You don't necessarily want to be switching in your Maridon to be taking damage from the Terrapagos or the Iron Hands, really. And Whimsicott does have access to Moonblast, which will do a good amount of chip damage. Right, exactly. If you're worried that Ivy Cudgel's not going to get the KO, especially after the parting shots and Intimidates, could try to go for the Moonblast and double target into that slot. But Sungjae actually swapping out this Ogre Pond Hearthflame, saving it for later. Just too many Intimidates. It's really hindering his damage output. Now it's time for Maridon to come back onto the field, resetting up that electric terrain, getting rid of the grassy terrain, and yet another light screen from this Whimsicott. So second time this game, Whimsicott's been able to set up the light screen. That means this Terra Star Storm is going to do way less damage to both the Sun Jays Pokemon. Look at that. No Calm Mind boost behind the light screen as well. He could take so many of those. Does connect a burn against this Maridon, though, which will be doing a little bit of damage over time. Will not be benefiting from its secondary effect of lowering the attack of the opposing side of the field. But given that this Incineroar's only real attack is knockoff, setting up burns on the other side of the field does make it easier for knockoff to get those critical KOs when it connects. One difficult thing about being an Incineroar player when you have both Will-O-Wisp and knockoff it's just that you have to get the timing perfectly, and there isn't even the opportunity Speaking for of it. timing, Incineroar never gets the chances. Draco Meteor, two for two, Sungjae. You hoped and you've been rewarded. Hit both your Dracos for two KOs here in game one. Now the pesky little Moonblast goes towards Terrapagos to do a little bit of damage, and now Terra Star Storm from Terrapagos. We saw how little it did the prior turn. I'd anticipate, yeah, pretty much the exact same thing, looking like maybe a five-hit KO or something like that. 
And this is why those Calm Nine boosts were so important to Huma at the beginning of this game. If you get to this end condition, especially knowing that your opposing Whimsicott has light screen and is going to be weakening those special attacks pretty easily, all things considered, nothing on Huma's side of the field can stop this Whimsicott from attacking thanks to that Covert Cloak. You find yourself in a position where you just don't have the damage to match. And even though this Maridon is throwing out those Draco Meteors and dropping its special attack as a result, Songjae still has all four Pokemon remaining, can easily switch that Pokemon in and out and bring it back in for the final KO. If the Ogre Pond or the Iron Hands honestly doesn't beat it to it first. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this, this Rillaboom is going to try its best, right? You love having Rillaboom to get rid of Maridon's terrain and you're feeling great. It's not hindered by Light Screen, but Remember, Sung Jae has the Terra Ogre Pond Hearth Flame just sitting in the back, waiting for its moment. A full health Iron Hands as well just goes to show how great of a position Sung Jae has put himself in in game one. The Encore into Tropicals. You say, oh, why would you want to take damage? You want to take damage so he can't click Substitute or Calm Mind or Protect or anything. Encoring him, forcing him into that pitiful amount of damage from the Terra Star Storm. Whimsicott is no bulky Pokemon in any scenario, and it looks like it's a five hit KO onto Whimsicott. There are still a few turns left in this battle, and I would not be surprised if Humahara is playing this out to try and figure out a strategy going into game number two. I love the switch in though from Zhang Jae of that Iron Hands, as it will be able to deal super effective damage to that Terrapagos. And uh, really, even though the Rillabooms Wood Hammer did about 50% of damage to the Iron Hands, you can easily remove that grassy terrain, easily remove the additional damage from grassy terrain that Woodhammer gets by switching in your Maridon. So Song Jae in a very commanding position to wrap up this game one. I think Humahara just trying to get a little bit more information, figure out how much damage all these Pokemon do, and then figure out an approach for game two. And Whimsicott kind of run out of buttons to click here in game <laughs> one, so might as well click Tailwind to boost the speed of the Iron Hands on the other side of the field. Is going to not pick up the KO. Tropico's just barely hanging on through the Drain Punch. However, it will recover some of the HP there, meaning this Terra Star Storm is not going to be able to KO the Iron Hands, barring maybe a critical hit or something. Doesn't even KO Whimsicott. That poor Terrapagos, I think at the end of the day, a lot of us at least who watch the North American International Championships earlier on this summer are more accustomed to the choice specs, max yes. special attack variants, where you see it still do significant damage, even if there is something like a light screen in play. This Terrapagos though, however, way bulkier, needs more time to set up. I think giving Humahara more opportunities to adjust in the moment throughout this competition, but in this top 16 match, unfortunately just unable to keep up with the pace of damage that Song Jae has. Yeah, there is the forfeit from Humahara and Sung Jae Jung is one victory away from moving on to the top eight here at the World Championships in Honolulu. You have to feel confident, not only for just being up a game so you have the flexibility in case you lose game two, but how commanding of a victory that was over the Japan national champion, he has to be confident. Not only do you have to be confident, I think that just looking at these teams on paper, you have all the tools that you need to answer Humahara's potential outs against the Maridon. We saw that initial light screen from that Whimsicott all the way back on turn one. We saw that Draco Meteor connect and get the instant KO on the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. There was just so much damage that Song Jae had access to. And what I thought was really well played was he was able to also shut down his opponent's strategies while he was still doing this big damage. It's a very delicate balance when you're running a Pokemon like Maridon alongside of the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame to have that support that can kind of weave in out very comfortably. I think that's why we see a lot of trainers rely on Pokemon like Rillaboom or Incineroar to keep things moving around, give yourself easy pivots. But Song Jae just showing with a lot of confidence that I don't need those Pokemon. A Iron Hands is bulky. Given a light screen, it's even bulkier. And I can go ahead and move these Pokemon in and off the field as I see fit. Yeah, this Whimsicott on Sung Jae's end is, is kind of just a, a glaring issue right now for a human in game one. And I don't want to sound crazy, Gabby. I know sometimes when we have double restricted formats, you say, oh, can I ever bring a, a game where four, uh, only one of my restricteds comes to the, as the four? Is there a chance in a single restricted format, Huma could leave Terrapagos home because Whimsicott is such a hindrance? 
you have to look at the other options that would fill the spot of that Terrapagos in this matchup. I don't think you can bring your Shifu'd Rapid Strike. There's just too many things on the opposing side of the field <laughs> yeah. that quite frankly shut it down. Too many grass and electric types on yeah. the other. <laughs> so, so that Pokemon's ruled off right out the bat. You do have access to your own Fluttermane with Icy Wind as a form of speed control. That could be interesting. And Thunder Wave. And Thunder Wave. But with all the electric Pokemon on Song Jay's side of the field and also the fact that you're going to be dealing special attack damage, not as good as a position, but speaking of special attack damage, I don't see the Whimsicott on the field. That's the first thing I noticed too, that Maridon and Ogrepan Hearthflame is the lead. So Sungjae feeling confident, not predicting Terrapagos on turn one, but of course, Humahara has his own Terrapagos and Ogrepan Hearthflame on his other end. So you have access to follow me, right? Try to keep that uh, Terra Shell intact with Terrapagos. He just loves not seeing Whimsicott. He does, but you still have to worry about the threat of a Draco Meteor into your own Ogre Pond to get that KO like we saw in game one. That's right, yeah, right away in game one, Draco Meteor connected and knocked out. No Terrapagos uh, on this turn. Instead, it is Ogre Pond Hearth Flame with the Terra. Oh, it was on Sungjae's end. They had, they had the mirror there. So uh, Sungjae going two for two in these games, terrestrializing his Ogre Pond instead of Maridon. Ogre Pond on Huma's side will go for the spiky shield. So any attacks into that spot, not doing damage. And Terrapagos going to follow suit. So no damage kind of gets Sungjae to bait out his terrestrialization. I like this play from Humahara, honestly. You take a bit of a step back, you slow things down, but this is the kind of situation where you can afford to go for a double protect and see what moves that your opponent opted into. I believe we saw the Ogre Pond and the Maridon target down the Terrapagos there, and I agree with Songjay's assessment that that is definitely the biggest Pokemon threat. And yes, you might it, as well, since Follow Me would just exactly, redirect it anyway. Exactly. At the end of the day, the Terrapagos was a huge part of Humahara's strategy going into that previous game, and even though you have the better matchup against it on paper, I think just removing the restricted Pokemon from the field is always going to be a strong play to fall back on. Yeah, let's see what happens here in game, or in turn two, I should say, of the game two. Humahara finally clicking the follow me to redirect this Draco Meteor, but it lands, unfortunately for Huma, not gonna be able to endure the Draco from Maridon, and he gets knocked out yet again, just like game one. Also like game number one here, or not unlike game number one, we do have the Terra Shell still in effect here for this Ivy Cudgel from the plus one attack on the Terrastalize Ogre Pond. Ooh. It's not very effective, <laughs> but is, it still brings it down to half its health. Resisted damage bringing it down to half and no grassy terrain on the field means he's not gonna be able to recover uh, more health there besides the leftovers. So he did click, uh, Huma did click Calm Mind on that turn, gets a boosted special attack and special defense Crucially, Whimsicott not here to encore it into Calm Mind. In addition, we have the Fluttermane making an appearance as an adjustment from Huma. Will be activating its booster energy to get a boost in its speed. So this is going to be a Fluttermane that is faster than the opposing Pokemon on the side of the field. Not only is there no Whimsicott to encore into Calm Mind, there's also no Whimsicott to provide some Tailwind support. So this Fluttermane could potentially use Icy Wind, drop the speed of the opposing Ogre Pond and the Maridon if it stays in on the field, opening up an opportunity for Terrapagos to go on the offense. That being said though, there still is a lot of health in play for this Terrapagos and depending on which Pokemon you anticipate your opponent targeting, trying to get an early knockout to match the knockout we just saw from that Draco Meteor would bring Huma back into the game. Losing that Ogre Pond so early without it attacking has just been huge in both games. He needs to make up for lost time. Maradon switching out, so Huma potentially anticipating the swap since the Draco Meteor made it lose two stats to its special attack. So of course, Maradon had to swap out into Iron Hands on the field. Yet again, no Whimsicott as of right now. Moonblast seems like it does perfectly 50% to the Iron Hands on the switch in. Now it's time for the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame for the Ivy Cudgel into Terrapagos. He never terrestrialized and Terrapagos is down. Terrapagos is down, which means Humahara is down to his final two Pokemon with the Incineroar and the Fluttermane. And while Fluttermane may be able
able to get a KO on that Iron Hands with a second Moonblast. That Ogre Pond Hearth Flame yeah, is looking Moonblast real to, pretty. Moonblast Icy Wind ain't doing nothing to terrify our Ogre Pond. It isn't. And again, such a unique adjustment coming into this tournament. That Pokemon making an appearance once again was very popular in the past regulations, but providing some incredible support here alongside of Maridon and just such an a such a powerful pokemon indeed and now you do have the incineroar on the field of course whimsicott was the one holding covert cloak so fake out is available into either of sung jay's pokemon maybe you go fake out uh, into ogre pond and hope moonblast picks up the ko onto the iron hands that'll get you through this next turn but unfortunately for humahara i think he's going to have to be looking at the thunder wave on that flutterman to try and find enough time to pick up a knockout on this ogre pond but with the fairy type terrestrialization on the Fluttermane, will be able to resist those fire type IV cudgels, will give it an opportunity, especially with the flinch on the opposing side of the field to find this KO against the Iron Hands. But still, it is three versus two in Songjae's favor with that Maridon and an unknown Pokemon still to contend with. Iron Hands goes down. I think Humahara just really did not want to risk a potential damage roll, seeing how Moonblast looked almost exactly 50% onto the Iron Hands. So wave, use your Terra Fairy for the Fluttermane. Uh, that Moonblast is going to be doing a lot of damage as well to Maridon. If it stays as Dragon type or even if it terrestrializes out, a Terra Fairy Moonblast, we saw the terror that Fluttermane uh, put onto the metagame for so long. It's still a lot of damage. Damage. It still is a lot of damage. The Maridon also cannot protect this turn, but it can be protected by a follow me from the Ogre Pond. Definitely follow me making so much sense re resisting a Moon Blast, but no Moon Blast. Instead, it's a Thunder Wave. Yumahara is going to put his hope on luck at this point that Paralysis will be on his side in the future turns. But the Electro Drift from Maridon, Incinero never stood a chance. That's a one hit KO. It could potentially be a game winning hit. It's just this Terra Fairy Fluttermane standing in the way of Song Jae Jung moving on to the next round of this competition. And while this Moonblast certainly will be able to pick up the KO on this Maridon, can the Ogre Pond find it in return? Uh, Maridon goes down. Song Jae still has a Pokemon in the back we haven't even seen, but Ogre Pond Hearthflame, one of the stories of the tournament, going to use that boosted IV Cudgel into the Fluttermane for the KO, and Korea's hopes are still alive. Sung Jae Jung knocks out one of the favorites in the tournament in Humahara. What a commanding top 16 victory. A very commanding.